Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about creating a class in Java. And here is our outline. First of all, we are going to see how we can define a class. After that, we will define the attributes or the data fields of this class. And finally, we will define the methods or the actions. So let's get started. Suppose that we want to create a class to be able to create objects that represent a circle in real life. First of all, let me tell you about the data fields or the attributes of this circle. This circle should have a center, which is a point. And also, it should have a radius, which is a double. So these are the data fields that we will define in the circle class. Now let's have a look at some methods or actions. First of all, we want a method that is called getArea and it returns a double. This method should calculate and return the area of the circle. Similarly, we want a getParameter method that returns the parameter of the circle. Also, we want a method that is called setRadius that takes a new radius as a parameter. This new radius is a double and we will assign its value to the radius of the circle. So this method is used to change the value of the radius of the circle to be equal to the value that is passed as an argument. And we don't want to return anything from this method, so its type is void. And finally, we want a setCenter method that takes a new center, which is a point, and we will assign the center of the circle to be equal to the value that is passed as an argument. So now we know the data fields and the methods that should be defined in our class. So the first step to create the class is to actually define the circle class. So have a look over here. We will use the class keyword followed by the name of the class. And as you can see, I'm using the Pascal naming convention. So the first letter of each word should be a capital letter. And in this case, we only have one word over here. Followed by that, we have this block of code. Inside this block of code, we will define the attributes and the methods of the class circle. Now have a look over here. In this class, there will be no main method. This class will be used to create circle objects. It will not be used to run some code. In other words, we will use this class in the main method of our main class. Just like we use the string class or the point class in our main method of the main class, we will use this class, the circle class, to create circle objects. So we don't need a main method in this class over here. Of course, we can create one, but in this case, we will not. Okay, so now we have our class defined over here. So the next step is to define the attributes of this class. So have a look over here. As you can see, directly inside the class, I'm declaring two variables. A point, which is called center, and a double, which is called radius. We are simply defining these two variables, and these are the attributes. So have a look over here. As you can see, these variables or attributes are declared directly inside the class. So they are not declared inside a method, for example. The variables that are declared inside methods are called local variables. But these variables are attributes, or instance variables. Moreover, these variables can be accessed anywhere inside the class. So later on, when we define some methods, we can access these variables inside all the methods in the class. As you can see, we are only declaring these variables over here. So these variables take default values. In this case, the center is going to be null because it is a reference type or an object, and the radius is going to be 0.0, .0 because it is a numeric type. And later on, we will see how we can assign initial values to our attributes using constructors. And finally, notice that each object we create using the circle class will have its own center and its own radius, just like we create different points using the point class, for example. So as a small summary, to define the attributes of the class, we simply declare these variables inside the block of code of the class. Now let's define the methods of this class. So I'm going to start with the getParameter method. It returns a double. And inside this method, I'm returning 2 multiplied by math.py multiplied by the radius. So what's happening over here? The parameter of the circle is equal to 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius of the circle. And as you can see over here, I'm using the variable radius that is an attribute inside the class. And as I said before, these attributes can be used in all the methods. So we are multiplying the value of the radius with math.py. So in Java, we have a class that is called math. And using the dot operator, I'm accessing a static field of this class. This field is called pi, and it contains the value of pi. Okay? And as you can see, we are multiplying this by 2. So this method will return the parameter of the circle. And by saying circle, I mean the circle object that we will create using the circle class. Okay? Now let's create the getArea method. It returns a double, and inside it, I'm returning the pi multiplied by radius multiplied by radius because the area of the circle is equal to pi r squared, okay? 
We still have two more methods, so let's create the set radius method. In this case, it returns nothing, so its type is void, and it takes a new radius which is a double as a parameter. And inside this method, I'm assigning the radius, which is the attribute, to be equal to the value of the new radius, which we got as an argument. Similarly, we will create a set center method that takes a point new center as a parameter. And inside this method, we will assign our center attribute to be equal to the value of this new center. So the address of the point that we got as an argument will be put inside our center point. So these two methods help us change the values of the attributes of a circle object. And later on, we are going to practice everything that you see over here. So if you have any doubts, don't worry, everything will be clear. So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.